This sport is so much more than merely bouncing a ball about, shooting baskets, and running your butt off back and forth for 48 minutes. It's a cult that captivates both on the court and out of bounds. We'll get to the bottom of basketball on this week's episode of FYI. Welcome to For Your Info. English. You got it. You got it. Hello, 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 and welcome to another exciting edition of FYI. On this week's episode, we are going to shoot hoops. That's right. Hacer una pachanga, I think you would say in Spanish. We are going to shoot hoops and learn about this popular game named basketball. And this is a game that I think is almost as big as as soccer. Let's be honest, soccer is probably the number one sport worldwide. But I think the NBA and basketball in general is a close second. Now, don't quote me on that, but that's just a little hunch I have. A hunch es una corazonada. So thanks for joining us today on the court in La Cancha. I hope you guys enjoy today's episode. And I just want to remind you that there's a bonus episode every week. Plus, you can get PDFs with all the vocabulary. And there are up to 400 words words every week in each episode so you'll learn about a fascinating topic all while being able to follow along with the vocabulary plus if you are a super duper student or an interstellar student on my patreon you can have weekly and monthly classes with me if you want to find out more information about bonus content and joining our curious community go over to patreon.com slash alberto alonso and that said i'd like to send a shout out to all my patrons, especially my super duper students, Mara, Javier, Francisco, Roberto, David, Jose Maria, Mila, Alex, Patricio, Edgar, and Lolis. And don't forget about my interstellar students, Paco, Diego, Carmen, and my lovely wife, Diana, or as we say in English, Diana. And if you translate it literally, it's bullseye. <laughs> I love those literal translations. Yeah, a bullseye, la diana de los dardos. You know, when you're playing darts, <laughs> nosotros lo llamamos el ojo del toro. And we're going to talk about bulls today. Not so much the animals, but the Chicago Bulls. All right, well, let's take a look at our intro. As always, I said this sport, be very careful here with these S's, my amigos. It's not es sport, it's sport. Fijaos lo que he hecho, this sport. Uno la S de this con la S de sport. Vamos a hacerlo. This sport is so much more, tanto, es, es muchísimo más, than merely, meramente, right, merely bouncing a ball about. Now, to bounce it about is the same as saying to bounce it around. The word bounce meaning botar in Spanish. So it's more than merely bouncing a ball about and shooting baskets. Remember I said to shoot hoops or shoot baskets and that's disparar a canasta. And a basket is literally una cesta. Balón cesto. I love it when things make sense. Then I said you're also running your butt off back and forth for 48 minutes. So to do something your butt off, followed by your butt off, is hacerlo a tope. So if you're working your butt off, it means you're working a lot. If you're running your butt off, you're running a lot. And this is really important to know as well. Back and forth. De un lado para otro. And well, 48 minutes because there are four quarters and all together that adds up to 48 minutes. Now we all know basketball games last a lot longer because there are timeouts, there are breaks between the quarters, there's a halftime show, which I love the halftime shows. Those are always tons of fun. And as always in the bonus part, I'm going to tell you guys about my experiences seeing Michael Jordan. That's right. I saw Michael Jordan 
Magic Johnson, Drazen Petrovic. So for those of you who know basketball, these are some of the greatest players to ever grace the court. And I'll tell you all about that in the bonus part of the show. Then I said, it's a cult that captivates. And a cult is like a religion, como una secta. It's a cult. And anybody who ever followed basketball will tell you it's more than a religion. They live basketball. They eat it. They breathe it. And I used to be like that when I was younger. Now I don't have time to watch NBA games, but I never missed a Chicago Bulls game when I was a kid. I had the jersey. The jersey is uh, el uniforme. And then I said both on the court and on the court is in la cancha and out of bounds and out of bounds is fuera de juego and then you heard that buzzer that famous buzzer and that's actually an expression in english when we say that somebody did something at the buzzer it means at the last possible second and that's an expression that comes from basketball we'll look at a lot more in the bonus part of today's show then i wrapped up the intro saying we'll get to the bottom of basketball there's that alliteration again to get to the bottom of something es investigarlo en profundidad so are you guys ready well let's start at the beginning when was basketball invented? Well, it was invented in the year 1891 by a Canadian-American gym teacher. Now, another way you can say gym teacher is P.E. teacher. P.E. stands for physical education. So you can say P.E. teacher, gym teacher, or phys ed teacher. Well, call him whatever you want. This guy named James Naismith invented basketball or something similar to the game we call basketball today. And as I said, this is in Springfield, Massachusetts. And of course, now we know it as what I said at the beginning of the show, one of the most viewed sports in the world. But the way it happened was in December of the year 1891, this guy, the phys ed teacher, James Naismith, well, he was working at the YMCA. It's fun to work at the YMCA. Okay. Well, the YMCA is not just a disco song. It's the Young Men's Christian Association. And it's an association that they have. They have one for women and they have one for men. And it's a, a Christian organization to get people together and encourage sports, uh, being a team player, and all of those values that religion promotes. And so while James Naismith was working as a gym teacher at the YMCA in Springfield, Massachusetts, he wanted to keep his kids active on a rainy, cold day. So he couldn't take them outside. These kids had to burn off energy. So he had to come up with a game that they could play indoors and this way they could play this game all throughout the winter see there's something that hasn't changed and so James Naismith borrowed a ball from another sport to borrow es tomar prestado he borrowed a ball from another sport and I'll tell you what that sport is in the bonus part uh, the first game was also played with peach baskets so they were real baskets cestas de melocotones and did you know that dribbling was not part of the initial games i mean it's one of the most important rules in basketball now you can't double dribble right you have to dribble all the time if you're moving around with the ball obviously we'll talk a little bit later about pivoting el pivote and this kind of stuff but dribbling wasn't part of the initial game my mind was blown when I read that. The way it worked was when a player caught the ball, you had to throw it to another player to keep the ball moving or keep the game moving. Sounds like football, to be honest. But in 1897, dribbling was introduced into the game by a college basketball team. And initially, the players were only allowed to use one pass, one bounce pass to pass the ball to each other. And finally, dribbling was a fully official thing about four years later. So that was uh, around 1900, 1901, dribbling came into the game. That's why I said the original game was very similar to the one today, but some of the most important elements didn't come into play yet. Like the 24-second shot clock, that's another thing that didn't come into play 
until much later. And it's when they saw that teams were wasting time when they were in the lead. To be in the lead is uh, ir ganando, ir con ventaja. They decided to impose a 24-second shot clock. So I think, you know, the game has evolved to this game we have today, which is a pure show. It's pure spectacle. If you've never been to an NBA game, you've got to go. You might not even watch the game. You'll just see all the cheerleaders and all the energy. And, you know, when they announce the players... And they turn off the lights. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your Chicago Bulls. I remember, I mean, my, my right now, my hair is standing on end, remembering them, announcing Michael Jordan's name, Scottie Pippen's name. I mean, whoa, it, I'm like, these are the best players in the world. I'm going to get to see them do their thing. So let's talk a little bit about the biggest basketball league in the world. It's the NBA, the National Basketball Association. And the league we know as the NBA was originally called the BAA, the Basketball Association of America, which was founded on June 6th, 1946. Well, they merged with their rival to merge as fusionarse. They merged with their rival, the National Basketball League. And this was on August 3rd, 1949, when they officially changed their name to the name they still use today, the NBA, which is synonymous with the best basketball on the planet. So let's talk a little bit about the rules of the game. We're not going to get too technical here, but just the basics. As we say in English, basketball 101. 101 is el primer curso de cualquier cosa. Biología. De, so es lo básico. So what is the, the objective, the aim of basketball? In a nutshell, en resumidas cuentas, it's about putting the ball in the opponent's hoop as many times as possible and scoring as many points as you can. And you use, obviously, a basketball. La pelota se llama a basketball, which is approximately 24 centimeters in diameter. And that has to go through a hoop that is 46 centimeters in diameter. And that is mounted to a backboard. A backboard is la tabla. And that is 10 feet, which uh, is uh, a little bit over three meters. Most shots are worth two points. If you shoot from outside the three-point line, that's what we call a three-pointer. There are also occasions when you can get one point when you've been fouled and you have free throws, as we call them. And there's so much strategy behind it as well. There are so many different kinds of plays. You've got the layup. A layup is when you run up. I don't know how to say this in Spanish. A layup is when you run up and you make it bounce against the the backboard. So you almost touch the rim. The rim is la parte de metal del aro. Not to be confused with a slam dunk. A slam dunk is when you put the ball in the hoop, but you slam it in there. Your hands touch that rim. In this case, it hits the backboard and goes in. In both cases, you have to penetrate the defense to get to that backboard. One of my favorite, the jump shot. Oh man, I used to love watching Michael Jordan's amazing jump shots. I mean, he would do a 180 degree turn, you know, facing away from the basket, turn around and in midair, do the most amazing jump shot you could ever see in your life. And he would do it from lo que llamamos three point land. La tierra de los tres puntos. O sea, cruzando la línea. Oh, and the word slam dunk is an idiom. So if you slam dunked it, or if you got a slam dunk, you did a great job. It wasn't called a slam dunk until 1972. Uh, formerly, it was known as a dunk shot. But in 1972, a guy named Chick Hearn, an American announcer and sportscaster, used the term for the first time. It was at an LA Lakers game, and the term stuck. It stuck means se quedó. And it is said that a guy named Robert Kurland was the first person to slam dunk. And this was in the 1940s. But again, it wasn't called a slam dunk until 1972. 
Now, we didn't talk too much about defense as well. It's a very important game. You have to play defense. In fact, one of the chants, uno de los cánticos is tu, 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 defense. So this is when we have to block shots, intercept passes. Um, obviously, you can steal the ball. That's the best thing you can do. And a very important part is, of course, the rebound. El rebote. Because, of course, if they miss the shot and you get the rebound, that's a chance for you to get down the court really fast. And I think that's one of the things I love about basketball, the pace, el ritmo. I mean, it is really a fast game as far as the NBA is concerned. I don't know about uh, the FBA or the, I don't know all the, the names of the other leagues, but Uh, NBA games are usually pretty fast pace. They're pretty aggressive. And as I said before, even if you don't like basketball, you are in for a treat. Os espera una sorpresa. And as we said before, too, there's no double dribbling. You can't walk with the ball without dribbling it. But you must keep that pivot foot on the ground. And I remember when I played basketball, that was the hardest rule for me to follow. <laughs> And I wasn't very good. I have to be honest, uh, I was not good at any sport, really. Hey, uh, different strokes for different folks. That doesn't mean I don't like sports. I'm just not good at them. Let's take a look at the positions as well. Now, remember, this is a, an official game here. You can play two on two, three on three, but normally it's five on five. Cinco contra cinco. The tallest player is is usually the center, which kind of makes sense. They're right there in the center like a tower. The second tallest and strongest usually plays in the power forward position. Then you can get a, a slightly shorter. Now remember, short doesn't exist in the NBA. Well, that's not true. We've had some very short players, and we'll look at that. We're going to look at height in a little bit. But you're looking for somebody who's shorter and a little more agile, and that person would go into the small forward position. Now, the word agile, I think you say agil, and the shortest players are usually the best ball handlers. A ball handler is uno que maneja el balón. And then you've got also the shooting guard and the point guard who basically implement the coach's plan. Right? They're like the captains. They're like the quarterback if we're talking about football. Now, I'm trying to simplify something that is really not that simple. But remember, this isn't about, you know, the ins and outs of basketball. We're just going to scratch the surface here and learn tons of amazing English vocabulary along the way. So how tall is the average NBA player? Right? How tall? Would it, take a guess. Let's see if you guys know. I, I put it in meters. I had it in feet because remember in the States, we use feet and inches. Well, it's usually six feet, seven inches. That would be the average. Now that would be about two meters. And the average weight, so las preguntas, how tall is he? And how much does he weigh? Well, the average weight of an NBA player is 101 kilos, the equivalent of 222 pounds. The tallest player to ever play in the NBA was a guy named Manute Bowl. I remember watching Manute Bowl play. Oh, and another guy, they were tied. Tenían un empate. Georgi Murisan. And they were both seven feet, seven inches. And that in meters, are you ready? A whopping 2.31 meters tall. And of course, if I'm going to tell you the tallest guys to ever play the game, I might as well tell you the shortest guy to ever play the game. And I remember him very well. He was so funny, such a character. His name was Muggsy Bogues, and he was five feet, three inches. The equivalent in meters is 1.6 meters. That's pretty short. So the other guys were almost a full meter taller than him. <laughs> Now, you'll have to forgive me. I'm not really good at meters, but I'm sure you guys can imagine uh, just putting your own height against these guys, how tall they are. But it's funny when you go see an NBA game, you don't notice it. It's like if everybody's tall, well, then nobody looks that tall. 
You know, it's different. Now, if you see me or my dad or somebody, some normal person with an average height, then you realize it. But when they're all on the court together, you don't realize how these guys tower over the rest of the world. I'd also like to talk about the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame, obviously named after our friend Naismith, our PE teacher who invented this game. And where is it located? You guessed it, amigos, in Springfield, Massachusetts. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is where the Simpsons are from. Well, just remember that in the United States, I think there's a Springfield or six in each state. It's a very common name for a town in the United States. So it could be the one the Simpsons are from. But hey, if you go and find out, let me know. I'm dying to go to the Basketball Hall of Fame. And the Hall of Fame inducted its first class in 1959. And now they've been inducting classes ever since. And in the bonus part of today's show, we're going to take a look at the goat. Meh. No, not La Cabra. I mean the goat, the greatest of all time. And I'd love to hear your opinion, especially if you're a basketball fan. We'll take a look at a few people and we'll let you guys make the call. And there's another expression that comes from sports to make the call no es hacer la llamada en este sentido the call is what a referee does tú lo pitas you make the call tú decides it's a great expression and a great usage of this word call a veces decimos hey what do you want to do ah it's your call decide tú una forma muy muy nativa de decir decide tú We'll also take a look at some of the darker moments in basketball. We'll take a look at these salaries, and many of them are way over six figures. A six-figure salary is un salario de cien mil. Yeah, as I said, way over. We're going to take a look at salaries, more fun facts, idioms, and so much more in the bonus part of today's show. I really hope you guys will join us for our extra time. And we'll wrap up this first part of the show with one of the most historic moments in basketball. Now, basketball is a sport that is full of milestones and magic moments, you know, last second shots. But I think one of the most important and one that I saw live, okay, not at the stadium, but I was watching TV and I remember biting my nails when I saw this. These, oh, I remember my mom said, are you okay? <laughs> and it's called The Shot. Vamos, ¿para qué le llaman? The Shot. <laughs> El Tiro. <laughs> it's got to be really, really good. And this was a basketball play that occurred during a 1989 playoff. So I was like 11 or 12 years old. I was a little kid. And, but I remember being so excited. I would lose my voice watching the Chicago Bulls play. And they were playing against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And it took place, it was a uh, game five. Remember, uh, our series are best of seven. El primero en ganar cuatro es el ganador. If you only need four games, then you only need four games. Well, this was game five. But it was a decisive game because if the Bulls win it, well, they go on to the next round. What happened was... Michael Jordan received an inbound pass, no, que iba en juego, an inbound pass. And he made what we call a buzzer beater. In este caso, to beat is vencer. Que ganas a el que llegas antes. A buzzer beater. Also an expression we use in English. A great thing that happens at the last moment. And he took this shot, amazing shot, and it gave the Bulls a 101 to 100 victory over them. The Cleveland Cavaliers being them. And they clinched the victory. To clinch is agarrar en el último segundo. It was mind-blowing. Uh, the final minute, I remember the final minute of the game, it was a nail-biter. There were six lead changes. Eso significa seis veces cambió el que estaba adelante en el último minuto. Think about that. It's a roller coaster. And, of course, the Cavs were in the lead, and it was the final possession. And there it was, Michael Jordan. They gave him the ball, and he took that shot 
like it was nobody's business, como decimos en inglés, giving the Bulls the victory. I remember that moment like it was yesterday. Now, we're going to hear that play in just a minute. I've got the original audio, and I want to see how much of it you guys can catch. Because let's be honest, sportscasters speak really fast. And when there's a lot of excitement in their voice, they scream. And well, we'll, we'll see. I think it's going to be hard to follow it all. But you guys guys let me know but before we listen to it i want to leave you guys with a quote a michael jordan quote that is absolutely inspirational because this time he made the shot but he didn't always make the shot and this is what he says i've missed more than 9000 shots in my career i've lost almost 300 games 26 times i've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed I have failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. I can't think of a more inspirational quote to wrap up this episode of FYI. Let's give it a listen here. This is Michael Jordan and The Shot. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of FYI. And three seconds remain. Chicago with the timeout now has only a 20. The Bulls have three seconds to try a shot and try to win the game. You'll see the drama unfold. Sellers will inbound. Sellers has Jordan. Jordan with two seconds to go. Puts it up and scores at the buzzer. Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago. Right now, let's go right over to JB with Michael Jordan. Oh, I'm Michael, now I thought you weren't supposed to be feeling so well coming into today's game. <laughs> you know, a lot of people put a lot of pressure on me, and uh, you know, I still couldn't concentrate and make my free throws. But I didn't have to take a free throw in the last shot. It was a shot. I felt comfortable. We came in, we stuck tough. We hung right in there, gave ourselves a chance to win. And won the ball game. As we take a look at this replay, now you're not one to do an awful lot of boasting, but you had some boasts to make to a few Chicago writers about this series. A lot of people put us out of this, this uh, whole series, and uh, you know, I, I, I opened my mouth a little bit, and I challenged the guys, I challenged myself, to say we can win in four. But we didn't win in four, we won in five. I don't care how many we won in, we won, and that's all that counts. And the big apple waits for you. We're going to New York, baby. Exactly.